What's happening, guys? This is Adi again, Gate 7 International, returning with deep dive number 11 of the season. Very exciting scouting report we've got for a pretty much out of the blue uh, loan coming in for the left back, Omar Richards. Very excited to uh, discuss and chat about our new Jamaican left back that will be joining us. But before we continue with the scouting report, real quick, everyone, take a couple of seconds, hit that like button, pound the subscribe button if you don't already. Help us get the engagements, help us grow the community. Over the course of the last three weeks, we've seen some great growth reaching all sorts of individuals from across the world. Red, white fans, old and new, that are here for the journey with us to see this season, a season of uh, rebuilding, a season of regrowth. We're excited for it, and we need your help to continue to grow the community. Don't forget, also, you can support us on Patreon, get early access to these scouting reports before the players are announced. We do our best to stay ahead of the game, get the best info who's coming in, and record these scouting reports early. You get access to those as well as our next-level analytics on certain match post-match discussions. So check that out, support us. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We're jumping into it. Omar Richards, our new 25-year-old Jamaican left back. He's actually coming in uh, at five foot nine, 174. So not the tallest of fullbacks that we've seen. Not that that matters, but we've been looking at a lot of taller players that have been coming in aside from uh, Yvonne Burnich. He's also weighing in at about 69 kilograms, so 152 pounds. Uh, he, he's got some muscle. It's a solid build. He spent most of his time at the Reading Youth. That's in England, uh, championship side Reading. And he eventually did play for the first team. Uh, he got his transfer to Bayern. And then after his time at Bayern, he went over to Nottingham Forest for a nice fee. When he went to Bayern, actually, Bayern got him for nothing. They signed him on a pre-contract right at the end of his contract term. But when he got to Nottingham, he never got to play because of some really bad injuries. He suffered a fracture in his leg, horrible, horrible uh, injury, hairline fracture. And then that was followed up by a hernia and then muscle injuries. The poor kid just could never catch a break. Looking at his profile, based on the games that he played with both Reading and, and Bayern Munich, he does carry the ball with a little bit looser touch than some of our current right uh, fullbacks, our current center backs too, we can say, but he does have pace. Loves to take space that's given to him. Really likes to get forward with the ball. He's pretty accustomed to staying high up the pitch as well. He did that both at Bayern and Reading. And when he moves with the ball at his feet, he's got there is a presence. I mean, I, I don't want you to think when I say he has a looser touch that it's just going all over the place. No, I just mean he he gives a little bit more space when he kicks the ball out, but that's because he he's pretty quick. He likes to kick the ball in front, catch up to it, not necessarily because he has bad technique. His ability, though, it's not really in his footwork. Not again, not that the technique's bad. Technique's actually pretty good, but his physicality is absurd. Very much an offensive fullback. Um, little disclaimer, though, before we start jumping into the data. He only played a little over 600 minutes at Bayern, so the sample is not as reliable as we would like. But it's also been a few years since the championship, and I really thought that using his time at Bayern maybe paints a better picture of his capabilities, even if there isn't as much time there. I thought it was a little bit more telling than his time at the championship. So, um that's the sample that we're using for the data. Just bear in mind it is 600 minutes, so there could be some variation with what we see as he transitions into the team under Coach Diego Martinez. So as we always do, we get started with some goal creation statistics. So here's his percentile data while he was playing at Bayern Munich for the time that he was able to play. And getting started at the very bottom third, you see there's the goal creation statistics. So no goals to speak of for almost four years. Uh, he has had plenty of shot opportunities. He did have a surprisingly high XG, as you can see here. He's above that 70th um, percentile uh, with, with the XG. So it's it's uh, he has plenty of shot opportunities, and he does have a couple of set piece opportunities here. He you know 
open play running into the box, but his most dangerous shot opportunities will come off these runs when he goes wide into the central area of the final third. And whether he gets himself just inside the penalty area or outside the penalty area, he'll rip some really nice shots there. That's where I saw for me the most dangerous opportunities that he created for himself. But as always, as we're going through these fullbacks, I've said it in multiple deep dives now uh, with the fullbacks that we've been bringing in and we're not looking for goal scoring for fullback. What we care about is more so service into the penalty area. Now, as far as his assist goes, he only had one assist in his time at Bayern. But for the time he played, not super horrible. When in comparison to his assist production, you can see as a on a per 90-minute basis, it actually puts him at close to the 80th percentile for assists. Just one assist in over 600 minutes. So it gives you an idea kind of how fullbacks do in terms of their end product did in the Bundesliga. He did outperform his uh, expected assists, so he doesn't create a whole lot of great opportunities. So I don't know exactly how sustainable that production will be, but he did have better output when he was at Reading in the championship. Has a very nice cross, and he almost never overhits them. Uh, one of the key factors in his ability to produce was how he drew defenders, manhandling them, but also drawing them to free up a teammate incredible vision at times too. had some lovely, lovely cutting balls through defenders from all distances had the highest volume uh, per 90 among fullbacks in Bundesliga in these type of all smart passes. That's actually up in the build up section. Uh, you can see he was the hundredth percentile in terms of uh, smart passes per 90 minutes among fullbacks. So he does have a remarkable ability to play the ball through, see his runners, even from across the field. Uh, that was something that really caught my eye, and I was very much impressed with as I continued to watch the tape on him. While we're on that topic, let's discuss his possession of built up, because that's really, as you can see from the data here, that's really where he stands out and where he can be the best for us. He, he can be a key figure in build up, get plenty of touches on the ball while he's on the pitch. He wants space, though, to explode with his pace and get the ball forward. Definitely functional in a faster-paced possession system, but really looks to give the space that's given to him. And this is understandable, right? He At Bayern Munich, there's a strict system in place. You're, they don't give a lot of players a lot of time to be carrying the ball constantly. It's pass and move. So, But it's good to see that he could settle in there, and he attracted the attention of Nottingham Forest. That's the reason that they were interested. They saw what he did in his 600 minutes there. And that's why he was transferred in. So it makes me believe if he was able to kind of bring it together for Bayern Munich, it, it maybe it tells me that he could transition to Diego Martinez's system if healthy. His off-ball movement is is more than commendable. Uh, when the ball's on the left side of the field, he'll stretch the width and you know go down, make runs down the line. If the ball's on the opposite end of the field, he's actually making runs inside and gets into the penalty area. Pass accuracy is solid, very reliable at most distances, uh, as well as in pass and move. I understand entirely why Bayern Munich poached this guy on a pre-contract. Exactly the type of back, just from the data, the profile that they would want. He's very talented. He's physical, fast on the wing, but he can still play technical ball, technical ball and pass and move. Uh, and, and that's very surprising. A lot of these more physical, fast guys, maybe that are pretty good on the dribble, I don't always see them being able to be working well in systems. They want to dribble the ball, do what they want. And and he actually seems pretty uh, pretty good when it comes to sticking with a plan and sticking with the tactics of a lineup. Not to mention, of course, I brought up before while we were talking goal creation, smart passes, vision. Don't usually see a lot of that with a fullback. And when it comes to smart passes per 90 minutes, he is, in the, he is the 100th percentile. He is the best, highest volume, of completed smart passes per 90 minutes compared to fullbacks. So that is something that is going to be very interesting uh, for us to have. He's a he's a guy that will be afforded time to get forward with us because our midfielders were dropped deep. So maybe we can see a little bit of that uh, to help us break down some of the buses in Greece. Maybe we'll see it happen and used in Europe, uh, depending on what happens with uh, our starter, Ortega. Defensive attributes. I brought up earlier that this guy's physical traits are really what make him uh, something special. And he is, or at least he was in the tape, a physical monster. Very hard to beat one-on-one -on -one with the speed and strength. Solid man marker and doesn't give too much space. Over 71% success in all duels. 
Uh, now, if you guys notice here, I got rid of the like dribble percentage, defensive dual percentage, area one percentage. And I did that because the last couple of deep dives, people were taking the wrong messages away, just seeing, oh, you know, like uh, with the Masuras Brinich, um, uh, everyone keeps seeing Masura 60% of, of dribble success. Oh, he's not that good. How can you see that? But what they're not realizing is he doesn't do it very often. He use it, uses it to get away from people. So instead of showing you the, the success percentage, I'm showing you the total number of successful attempts because it's also a function of volume. And I want you to see, okay, sure, maybe Oleg has a better success percentage in, in dribbling or whatever, but he's not doing it very often. And that's why I want you guys to see, let's just look at the successful times it happens. That way you have a better idea of how often it's happening and, and the function, not just of success, but also of the volume of attempts. So with regard to his defensive duels, he, I mean, this guy's a monster on the ground. Again, amongst fullbacks in the Bundesliga in the 100 percentile, over 71% success in all of his ground duels. Rarely saw him get beat or get beat easily for that matter. Always a battle. Always is giving whoever is coming at him a battle. Um, he generally, if he did get beat, it was on set pieces. Uh, and that had to do with sometimes, I don't know, it looked like confusion and man marking to me. Um, quite a few interceptions as well, but not necessarily as good at reading the play. A lot of times he was in the right place at the right time. I think it's just because his positioning is pretty good. But I didn't see a lot of like him reading or or anticipating where the ball was going to be going. But he also has his speed and his physicality. If if he sees his man running somewhere or anticipating that ball, he's going to just get there and beat him to it. Very physical and intercepting balls by just sheer speed and power. I alluded a little bit to his set piece weakness. He's really not. And you can see that in the defensive trait aspect of this whole thing. You can see that he is moving all over the place, but he's just not good in the air. Could be because of his stature. He's not the he's not the tallest guy in the world, but um, that's not that's he's a monster on the ground. So don't expect this guy to be really doing a lot for us in the air. He'll be covering ground, covering our opponents, and and really really stopping things, especially in open play. Now that we've gone over the general profile of the player, it's time we take a look at a comparison. Everybody keeps asking about the comparison to Oleg. You guys have been asking ever since this player was announced. How does he shape up to Oleg? How does he shape up to what we already had? So here you have it. And Oleg and Omar can't be more different players. Oleg was better in the air. Did have a little bit better service into the penalty area. Uh, but that's really about it. Compared to the other potential left backs we've looked at, Oleg is usually a little bit better defensively. But by all by all accounts, compared to a healthy Omar, Oleg is a tier below, just in general, especially offensively. Omar has the speed that Oleg has that we saw when Oleg first came, but he's better physically, can actually dribble the ball, take players one-on-one. -on -one. And if he's healthy, even as a backup, Omar is a clear upgrade. One of the things that I always look at when we look at replacements, especially with regards to Oleg, is overlapping and off-ball movement. I look at that a lot. Because in the last two seasons, Oleg has not given us a lot of the overlapping, and it's driven us nuts, especially on that left side. That left side of, of our attack, when Oleg has been involved, has been one of the weakest threat-generating sides offensively or our, our weakest area offensively for the last two seasons. This isn't just by XG. It's also by total volume of attacks. It's it's just how it has been, unfortunately. And that's not necessarily just Oleg's fault. That's also the fault sometimes of his partner on the wing. But he does play a part in that. So when when we bring some of these people in, or when we're looking at some of these targets, the first thing I look at is overlapping and off-ball movement because that's what we need. So if I don't see the solid movement, I am immediately negative. Omar has that work ethic. He moves into space, moves a lot, and overlaps heavily. Hell, his positioning is basically like a midfielder sometimes. That's how high up the pitch he stays. And that's what he did for Reading and Bayern Munich. So he overlaps, he dribbles one, for one versus one, and he's a physical beast. He can also pass a move with high reliability. So for me, that's, I spell upgrade. So all in all, now that we've done the comparison, Ole, we've looked over at the profile of the player. 
What's my verdict? Well, you've heard me use the if word a lot in this scouting report with regards to his health. If he's healthy, when he was healthy. That's the big if about this signing. This guy's injuries last year were terrible. And recovering from a fractured leg, a hernia, as well as those muscle injuries, even if the recovery has gone according to plan, there's definitely some regression in terms of his physical capability. And until he gets fully match fit, I'm not super confident that we're going to see the same player that I saw on this tape. I doubt he's got the same physicality. I doubt he's as fast as he was before. And given that his physical traits were such a core piece of the value proposition of his game, it leads me to wonder whether he'll have the same value to us like he would have before. But then again, if he was how he was before, we wouldn't even be sniffing him. So the injuries and the fact that his physical capabilities are really what stood out for me, this does dampen my outlook on him. The signing is mid-risk. Uh, you know, he's he's coming in alone, but he's not cheap. Almost two million a season in wages. So, okay, he's not coming as a starter, which is a little bit less risky, but he's an expensive non-starter if that's the case. But all in all, I'm going to give this about, it's not a full thumb up, not two thumbs up, just one. And we're looking at about a three-quarter thumbs up here. So I'm, I'm cautious. I do see talent in the player, and I see something that can be salvaged. I really believe this player can be another case of like a Joel Campbell where this guy's just been, the, his career now is hampered by injury, and he comes to Libyakos, and, and he shows that he still got it. He shows that the injuries didn't finish him off. And I believe that this can happen. Why? Because we've witnessed this with Banos Retzos so far. Knock on wood, what Banos Retzos has done is nothing short of a miracle. And if we have been able to get Retzos back to his pre Bayer Leverkusen, you know, form when he looked amazing for Libyakos before that sale, then I believe Omar can come back to his former self too. So in the end, there you have it. I'm not 100% sold. This isn't a thumbs up. This is the first not thumbs up I'm giving because even my concerns over Freire, even my concerns over uh, El Kabi were still thumbs up. This is like a three-quarter thumbs up because I do have concerns about the injury. But I'm still more, the, more positive than not on the outlook. And with that said, the business is almost done. We just probably need another striker, uh, another midfielder if Mahdi leaves, and one more winger. After that, the business is pretty much done, and we get to see what the final puzzle looks like after all the pieces have been assembled. So I'm excited to see what's going to be done. There's a couple more deep dives on the way, and I think we all need to remember, a, a lot of you guys have been frustrated with, with the game so far. Trust the process. Let him cook. Let Cordon cook. We've seen some solid players come in so far, and the ones that have seen the field have actually been pretty decent. So we're going to trust the process. We're going to believe that Cordon and Martinez know what they're doing because they do. I believe they do. I believe in the project that they're building, and we're just going to see what happens. Got a lot of important matches coming up. The season's back in full swing again. There's a lot of stuff to look forward to. Thank you guys for turning into yet another deep dive. I really hope you found this informative on uh, a player that just kind of came in out of nowhere uh, for a loan for us. The plenty of talent, plenty of of hopefully hopefully good memories to come from this player. I think he can produce that for us. More signings are still coming. Like I mentioned, I'm expecting at least three more uh, before the end of the window. More work for me, of course, and of course, more scouting reports will follow those signings. So thank you, everybody, for listening. This is Adi from Gate 7 International. By the fans, for the fans. And we'll see you again.